Hello fellow developers. Welcome back to the channel where we explore the fascinating world of coding. I'm your host Don Hash and today we have something special for all you Java enthusiasts out there. As a software developer, I understand the importance of writing efficient code. So, in this two-part video series, we'll share 10 interesting coding hacks that can boost the performance of your Java code in your day-to-day -day projects. Let's dive right in. First up, let's talk about string manipulation. In Java, the string class is immutable, meaning once a string is created, its value cannot be changed. When you perform operations like concatenation or substring, a new string object is created each time, which can lead to unnecessary memory allocation and increased overhead. Look at this piece of code. The plus operator concatenates first name, a space and last name to form the full name. However, this results in the creation of a new string object in memory. Even if you perform this operation multiple times, this new object will be created. To avoid this performance overhead, we can use the string builder or string buffer classes. These classes provide a mutable buffer for strings, allowing us to efficiently modify the contents without creating new objects. Now, take a look at this code. We use string builder to construct the full name by appending first name, a space and last name. The method append modifies the buffer directly avoiding the creation of unnecessary string objects. Finally, we call toString method to get the complete full name string. Now you might wonder, should I use string builder or string buffer? Both string builder and string buffer are similar and provide the same functionality. However, there is a crucial difference. String builder is not thread safe, while string buffer is. If you are working in a single threaded environment, string builder is generally preferred due to its slightly better performance. If your code is used in a multi-threaded environment and requires thread safety, use string buffer. Even though, keep in mind that it may have a slight performance overhead due to synchronization. By using string builder, or string buffer when necessary for string manipulation, you can significantly improve the performance of your Java code when dealing with extensive string operations. Next, let's discuss the power of for each loops. The enhanced for loop, also known as the for each loop, and how it can improve the readability and performance of your Java code when iterating over collections or arrays. Traditionally, when iterating through elements of an array or a collection, developers have used the standard for loop with an index variable. While this approach works perfectly fine, it can sometimes lead to more verbose or error-prone code, especially when dealing with complex data structures or nested loops. Now, here comes the for each loop to the rescue. It was introduced in Java 5 as a more concise or readable way to iterate over arrays, collections and other iterable objects. With the enhanced for loop, you can directly access each element of the array or collection without the need of an index variable, which makes the code cleaner and easier to read reducing the chance of introducing off by one errors. Now, let's talk about the performance aspect of for each loop. In most cases, the performance difference between the traditional for loop and the for each loop is negligible and the choice between them comes down to readability and personal preference. However, it's essential to be aware of a potential performance pitfall with the for each loop while iterating over collections or arrays if you need to modify elements the for each loop might not be the best choice 
the for each loop uses an iterator internally and modifying elements during iteration can lead to a concurrent modification exception or produce unex unexpected results. If you need to modify elements, prefer the traditional for loop with an index. However, keep in mind that even the for loop modifying the elements in the collection while iterating can cause issues. To safely modify elements, use the iterator interface or other appropriate methods provided by the collection class. So, in most scenarios, the for each loop will be your go-to choice for its clean syntax and ease of use, leading to more maintainable and readable code. Did you know that using the right data structures can significantly impact your code's performance? In the world of programming, data structures may play a crucial role in how efficiently your code performs. In this point, we'll explore how choosing the right data structure can significantly impact the performance of your Java code. When working with collections of data, Java provides several built-in data structures such as ArrayList, LinkList, HashMap, and HashSet among others. Each data structure has its strengths and weaknesses, and understanding when to use them can make a substantial difference in your code's performance. Let's start by discussing the difference between array lists and linked lists. Array list is a dynamic array implementation in Java. It offers fast random access and retrieval of elements through indexing. This means accessing an element by index, for example, getting or setting a value is an O1 constant time operation, making it great for scenarios where you frequently access elements by their position. ArrayList is suitable for use cases where you have a list of elements and you mainly read or update elements by their index. However, be cautious when frequently inserting or removing elements from the middle of the list as it involves shifting elements leading to ON time complexity. In such cases, consider using linked list. Linked list is a doubly linked list implementation in Java. It excels in insertions and deletions at any position as they require updating only a few pointers and don't involve shifting elements like array listers. So insertions and deletions are O1 constant time operations for linked list. However, linked list is not ideal for random access, as accessing elements by index is an ON operation requiring traversing the list from the beginning or end until the desired position is reached. Therefore, it's best suited for scenarios where you need frequent insertions and deletions. But random access is not a primary concern. Now let's talk about hash map and hash set, which are fundamental data, data structures dealing with key value pairs and set of unique elements respectively. Hash map is an associative array or directory which allows you to store and retrieve values based on unique keys. It provides fast key based access making get and put operations O1 on average. When you need to search for value based on keys, hash map is an excellent choice for its efficiency. Hash set on the other hand is a data structure that stores a set of unique elements. It ensures that no duplicate elements are present in the set. Like hash map, Hash set offers constant type performance for insertion, deletion, and lookups of elements. Both hash map and hash set internally use hash functions to distribute elements, which contributes to their constant time performance characteristics. The key takeaway here is to choose the data structure that aligns with your specific use case. For example, if you need 
fast random access by index used array list if you require frequent insertions and deletions especially in the middle use linked list for key value mappings and quick lookups based on keys go for hash map when dealing with sets of unique elements opt for hash set by selecting the appropriate data structure you can ensure that your code operates efficiently and effectively leading to improved performance and a better user experience when it comes to building performant applications optimizing database access is often a critical factor in this point we'll dive into some strategies to improve the performance of your java code when interacting with sql database in java Database access is commonly done using JDBC to execute SQL queries and retrieve data from the database. While JDBC provides a straightforward way to interact with databases, there are several techniques you can employ to enhance its performance. One of the primary considerations when using JDBC is choosing between prepared statement and statement objects. for executing queries the statement interface is a general purpose method for executing sql queries however it has a potential security risk known as sql injection sql injection occurs when an attacker manipulates input data to execute unintended sql commands to prevent sql injection always prefer using prepared statement over statement prepared statement allows you to parameterize your queries which means that placeholders are used for input data rather than directly concatenating values into the sql string this ensures that user input is treated as data and not executable code as you can see with prepared statement we use a question mark as a placeholder for the username parameter we then set the parameter value separately using set string method to ensure safe and parameterized execution of the query another important aspect of database optimization is indexing indexes are data structures that speed up data retrieval operations by providing faster access to specific columns and combinations of columns ensure that columns frequently used in where clauses or joins are appropriately indexed indexing can significantly reduce the time it takes for the database to search and retrieve relevant rows connection pooling is another technique to improve database access performance establishing and closing database connections can be expensive in terms of time and resources connection pooling involves creating a pool of pre-initialized database connections that are reused for multiple client requests this avoids the overhead of establishing a new connection for each and every request and can significantly enhance the performance of your application When dealing with multiple database operations that needs to be executed together when dealing with multiple database operations that need to be executed together consider using batch processing with prepared statement batch processing allows you to group multiple sql statements and execute them in a single trip to the database This reduces the number of round trips between the application and the database, leading to better performance. Optimizing database access in your Java applications can lead to substantial performance improvements by using prepared statement for safe and efficient query execution, indexing for fast data retrieval, employing connection pooling and utilizing batch processing. you can create high performance applications that interact with databases seamlessly
let's explore the importance of minimizing object creation in Java and how it can significantly improve the performance of your code. In Java, objects are created and managed by the JVM's garbage collector. Creating and later garbage collecting objects can introduce overhead and impact on the overall performance of your application, especially in resource intensive scenarios. So why minimize object creation? Every time you create an object, memory allocation and initialization are involved, which consumes processing time and memory resources. Additionally, frequent object creation can trigger more frequent garbage collection, causing temporary pauses in the application's execution. To improve performance, it's crucial to minimize unnecessary object creation and reuse objects where possible. Object pooling is a technique used to reuse objects rather than creating new ones each time when they are needed. Instead of letting objects go out of scope and be garbage collected, they are returned to a pool and can be later fetched and reused. Object pooling is particularly beneficial when dealing with objects that are expensive to create such as thread instances, database connections or heavy computational objects. Look at this code where the frequent object creation happens without object pooling. In the example above, we use the object pool that manages instances of heavy object. Instead of creating a new heavy object each time, we acquire objects from the pool and release them back after using. This reduces object creation overhead and improves performance. Another aspect to consider when minimizing object creation is auto boxing and unboxing. Java allows primitive types such as int and double to be automatically converted to their corresponding wrapper classes like integer and double and vice versa. This is called autoboxing and unboxing. While autoboxing provides convenience, it can lead to unnecessary object creation when used in performance critical codes such as loops. In the above examples, using integer.value of instead of i directly helps minimizing autoboxing as it reuses existing integer objects within a predefined cache. By minimizing unnecessary object creation, implementing object pooling for resource intensive objects and being mindful of autoboxing and unboxing you can significantly enhance the performance of your Java code. Keep these optimization techniques in your mind during development process, especially in performance critical sections of your code. You will notice a noticeable improvement in your application's efficiency. As we wrap up this video, I hope you have enjoyed the content so far. Part 2 is going to be even more exciting and packed with another set of cool Java performance tips. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you won't miss it when it drops. See you in part 2.